Welcome everyone to our open source and mostly Linux channel here. Usually you see me just playing with this latest and greatest, greatest expensive overkill epic and thread wrapping AMD and Intel and other such gear today live from my house. So you shouldn't see that. <coughs> uh, always fail live from my desk. Um, live from my Linux assess point um, today here. Um, which I uh, live streamed some two or maybe three years ago. I intentionally purchased that. Um, actually, I was running the old Linksys pure to my uh, cheap skatedness here. Um, the old Linksys I've run also for 10 years um, because why not? Didn't need faster Wi Fi and stuff, except, yeah, except security, I know. And I intentionally purchased this back in the day, two or three years ago, with this. Stupid and annoying, but you know this government EU regulation stuff of locking radios and so I uh, Back in the day thought I better buy something before I don't get anything open source support anymore. I did run the stock firmware uh, For two years or so uh, for the office Wi-Fi here uh, Also again, not the best security practice with a lack of updates and so on and so I finally flashed first uh, open WRT is so the usual get to go to but the thing is with um, <clears throat> wireless RT, which uh, open open wireless um, open WRT. Um, I still run this here to boot that, um, but which uh, glibc do they even use? Do they use? Uh, oh, okay, they are they use Musil. Interesting. But the problem with this, of course, that it's not very full featured, right? Even with this. So, what is my point here? My point is to re-propose this. As you see, I already emerged with quite some stuff. So the point of this is freeing your more of your embedded network gear um, because that's a dual core Cortex um, Cortex A9 even 1.6 gigahertz and 512 uh, megabyte of memory uh, PCIe uh, serial ATA USB 3 also uh, usual embedded limited stuff. So what is the point of this stuff? The point of this is that that allows me and you to run all your microservices, right? Think all the professionals logging in, even, even yes, I emerged Emacs. So you could run even a text email client, um, Emacs VM, Mu, MUT and all the, um, was it Pine and stuff? MUT Pine, ah, I'm not in, in all of those mail user agents. Um, but also, real servers, right? Um, I now want to run uh, WireGuard, for example, and it's all the stuff that the stock firmware does not lower, right? So the the cons of the stock firmware, no update, usually no updates, if updates, very seldomly, only like if super major security vulnerabilities are encountered, no additional installation, like why, like it's also a set state, right? All this locked in, not only locked in phones and Apple devices, but also wireless things, right? It would have been so much more amazing if for decades already this would be from the factory computers that you could install your stuff like uh, server applications, right? File server, Zamba. And for most people, it's actually enough, right? To serve all their household, even backup, right? I have here right now um, a whole uh, NVMe on the drive, actually a, uh, maybe even like a terabyte one actually. God, so that is also over USB. Um, so some not using all the space yet. Yeah, one terabyte. Like yeah, one terabyte. Other people pay the subscription to Apple and Google and stuff. I like my data um, at home also, and not other people st stealing my data. So what does it mean? It also means for me testing, right? So it's it's like multiple benefits, um, latest security stuff. Uh, freedom to install all your own stuff, not only some server applications. Think run your own small. I mean, you can run your own small web server from this stuff, right? No, no need for. I mean, also I'm not inventing this new, right? Um, everyone and Open WRT have done this for a, a decade, but what is new is also bringing this to T2. I actually wanted to do that. So yeah, just to run, not to pay advertisement, just to run. Yeah, the, the, the choice of. The current open WRT may be compatible. I, I didn't cross-check that, but yeah. Or even, ah, 
number six, still what I, the so best list of uh, 2023, still by two or three, four year old gear um, that I, although I, it's not, this links is saying it's not a bit advertisement. Um, it's like, yeah, this links is also that. And it's sold out, right? I, I'm not sure if you can actually order that. I just checked this yesterday. I don't think they sell it anymore. Um, I actually wanted to do that already for decades. All the, all the stuff on my to-do, if you usually, a recurring subscriber, usually see my to-do has probably a thousand entries. And only now with all this YouTube stuff, um, I get more to that. I probably have probably a decade old listing somewhere. I probably target, so yeah, super old stuff. I probably should delete um, most of this. Yeah, WRT. We have an example target. I didn't use that though. Like we have a like diet Lipsy. <coughs> a diet, diet Lipsy, um, probably based super small target. So one super annoying thing is which why many people always ha ask about this embedded board. It, it probably also is actually cheaper than some embedded boards, right? Except maybe Raspberry Pi, but um, back in the day, all the embedded boards, like a decade ago before the Raspberry Pi, all the embedded boards were also always expensive, right? TI, TI Beagle board or uh, other such stuff, I think often 200 euro, 300 euro, were at least as far as I remember prices. So often such kind of consumer gear also super affordable, <coughs> excuse me. I'm still recovering here to my sword. Um, super affordable, right? Um, if you want to do monitoring, uh, IoT stuff, uh, fan controls, maybe solar charge controls, all the other stuff, right? And so co finally coming back to this, because obviously um, I already support all the major Unix workstations from HPP Arisk um, to Sun, Microsystems, Spark, and, and IBM PowerPC, and also more, more good stuff coming for, for that, if you are into high-end Unix risk server gear. Don't forget to share like and subscribe. But um, also putting more effort into ARM now, except microkernel. We also, we also need to do microkernel. So super annoying thing though, what, what really extremely annoys me is that it is such a mess, right? So this is also why I'm currently still booting OpenWRT and then change root and like use this as a firmware image thing and, and currently running kernel, uh, which is of course super annoying. I, I will probably not even build a I mean, I can build the kernel. The problem is all those. So not only do you need a specific kernel like patches, also I checked for this hardware, this is Marvel Armada uh, 380 X or so. Uh, that is upstream, I guess in the meantime, probably since already four years, most of the stuff should be upstream. Of course, as usual, I look into this and I still instantly find stuff like a CPU idle is disabled because near buggy, uh, thank you very much. And uh, also if, I, this is an NVMe USB 3 adapter dongle. Um, there, the, the kernel says, yeah, thank you very much. I'm not using um, UAS uh, because USB controller does not support streams, which are required for the USB attached SCSI driver. So please try another USB controller. It's like, yeah. <coughs> but anyway, so a little bit performance, not, not that you would need the performance. Um, although it would be nice to have, but that's usual stuff like embedded hardware, like yeah, CPU idle bugs, uh, interrupt bugs, other hardware glitches, errors, and, and shitty USB controllers. So for me, of course, we uh, will use it. it. It can also replace some servers, right? We have here some x86 servers for some stuff. So such hardware in this day and age, uh, especially Fridays for Future and uh, war going on and uh, energy and electricity in Europe and, and elsewhere or even in, in such um, areas, use this stuff for recomputing stuff, right? So this is, um, I built here some stuff. This is high performance general purpose ARM stuff, right? This is faster than your Intel Pentium 3 or so from 20 years ago. And stuff is not that slow, right? I already emerged uh, Lua JIT as a test that didn't even build that. Uh, also best. So yeah, also for me, testing, testing, and more testing. <coughs> um, if it weren't for this stupid gazillion um, sock support things. Um, I emerged Lua, I emerged of all of things Emacs and did I emerge Tmux? Not sure. Or did I ship Tmux? Maybe, maybe we shipped Tmux. Um, a WireGuard, I actually emerged. Uh, I arsened, uh, here are all logs because I arsened this from my build server. 
But as you see, I emerged BTOP. So BTOP is a little bit slow um, to build because it's built, built with um, C++, but WireGuard built in only, uh, if you want performance numbers, WireGuard is, is C, so that uh, built only in uh, 23 seconds, which is actually uh, quite okay. Uh, Emacs built in something like nine minutes, BTOP built, yeah, three minutes because uh, C++, that is of course another layer of complexity. Emacs, Emacs builds, yeah, nine minutes, I mean, yeah, C++ and BTOP, right, versus nine minutes, I mean, compiling nine Emacs, like a whole freaking editor operating system in nine, uh, not even nine and a half minutes, is actually quite um, usable, right? Um, yeah, Lua JIT, um, let's give you those numbers too. I mean, NeoFetch is only storing one file. Um, what did I say? Ah, Lua and Lua JIT. So Lua built in one minute and Lua JIT built in one, um, nearly two minutes. Um, for me, I found also some bugs, right? For me, it's always not only like making better use of our office equipment, uh, potentially replacing some more energy Hungry x86 things here in our server rack. Um, in general, office connectivity and, and, and VPN stuff. Um, I also found some bugs um, as per usual. Um, at least ICU stuff. So Firefox fails to start. It's like, yeah, of course I started. Of course, me being me, I, of course I start, tried to start Firefox um, on my access point. Um, so I have some Apparently ICU thing, so it's, it's a generic ICU thing here. So ICU, this is what you saw earlier. So um, probably some data. Uh, I need to check if either the ICU Unicode data was built into this library, which maybe the data is messed up, but that's also the stuff, right? The difference between just releasing, I actually, I, I built like every month, I built a set of all major releases of T2 and then didn't up, like I seeded r this to our, um, content distribution network, file servers, um, in some temp directories and some people tried it, but always, there's always one more thing, right? It's like the last T2 release was delayed six months. Uh, this time we are delete or delayed already three months. It's like, yeah, of course, if you are a perfectionist and improve stuff and oh, if you test too much and actually find, not like Apple releasing shit with bugs, but actually, yeah, use your own ARM version 7 build. And that is, we majorly restructured the, restructured the ARM builds in T2 the last month, right? Remember when we switched to this ARM version 5, 6, 7. So that is, uh, which did I even install here? So many different build uh, variants. I think I installed something pretty matching, like uh, yeah, ARM version 7. So this is also the first time testing this new style of optimized um, Things and for that, uh, yeah, R sync, um, all, all the like fancy and it's like also why uh, the other day, like yesterday or so, wanted to compile Zumba, right? So the most amazing stuff would, of course, then now be Zumba if you have files serving at home, but certainly you can use something else today, which unfortunately doesn't cross compile. So it's like, yeah, I could actually for the test um, cross compile. Uh, I hate BTOP in, um, I hate Tmux in. Control B. But anyway, um, so yeah, subversion works. I, I checked out all the T2 sources. I built the stuff right. So nothing like running a whole uh, operating system development environment and full. It's like, yeah, this is so native compile speed, right? Um, the ideal thing for T2 would be to support all those embedded ports, um, which like, like naming this links this thing an embedded board, which kind of sort of Marvel platform is. Um, the real problem is, and that is the only major thing of OpenWRT. So why did I use T2? Because obviously all those 5,000 packages are not part of Open um, OpenWRT, right? Besides, I'd actually I tried to build OpenWRT yesterday or the day before yesterday, and I was the first time in my life and I was actually not the most impressed. Um, so yeah, full, full T2 native config stuff running here that is uh, optimization. So we, that is a full position independent code stack mission protector, uh, link time optimized, uh, it's probably smartest, yeah, smartest link time optimized um, flavor. Uh, probably the silicon has never seen such optimized binaries as those. Um, yeah, so the real, the real pain is collecting all those different 
bootloader quirks image generation stuff and um, and then also um, all those glues I, I noticed the uh, open WRT um, stuff I think they have special code also to get MAC addresses out of some config flash areas and stuff um, this kind of stuff is like the really time consuming stuff what uh, you find an open WRT, which is why I used to bootstrap that here. But there are all those partitions, and then they have their hard coded stuff or lab, yeah, hard coded stuff per um, device for getting like MAC addresses and other configuration data out of, I don't know, dev info or wherever, which is like, yeah. Anyway, I um, just wanted to um, point this out. Um, if you are into that also, the other re thing is with OpenWRT, you don't have file systems. So I, I had to, um, what I nearly never do is so like, I never use X4. And so like with then full T2, you would then be able to use like better FS stuff and LVM and crypto setup and so on. Um, which would be something for another day actually has some modules loaded. Yeah. so. I need to see where we go um, with that. For now, it is mostly like testing, testing, the most testing, um, found some bugs. Um, I will, like, I can finally use the device I purchased two years ago. And which is also silly, right? Recurring reminder, so hardware and software should not be so locked that you can't use a device that you purchased, like even embedded device at this point. Um, it is silly that we didn't end up in a like a like PC like general purpose like generic compatible ARM boot infrastructure and we need it's it is not like I think another Star Trek episode of parallel mirror universe thing where stuff is cooler for a change. It would be so amazing if all the ARM stuff would be PC like boot compatible and we would only have one ARM kernel with some alternatives and variants. And, and not this U-boot and other flash image, nah, um, total waste of time. It's it's hilarious. Um, yeah, need to see, we probably should support, <coughs> I should probably should, uh, excuse me, I, I'm still not 100% fine. <coughs> I should probably put some efforts into supporting at least some embedded boards like the Raspberry Pi directly for people to be able to just take T2 and be able to boot it. Um, it's of course one step closer with this more gener generic multi-platform ARM stuff. But yeah, let's see what comments do we have. Um, so if you need some more full-featured Linux, like like a full-featured Linux, actually we could certainly... Yeah, that is also the thing, right? We build 31 release variants um, and then we use glibc, right? So, but yeah, Musil that is, yeah, how many build variants. I mean, you can build all of those with T2. You can probably, ARM should probably build with Musil. Um, didn't test it recently, but probably should. <clears throat> it's of course a tiny little bit smaller, but um, we also built with glibc to be able to run Firefox and all the other stuff and, and have all the 29 or 28, all with glibc, the, the full, full featured, yes, massive, and, and yeah, but super full featured standard new system library we have Musil. but yeah leave in the comments below and um, yeah I, I will not support all of the like patches welcome um, I will need to work on enabling the infrastructure to add all those definitions of how to generate those boot images and firmware images for those bloody embedded devices and but patches welcome right if you have some crazy embedded board um, then yeah Please feel free. Um, ping me. Um, and that's of course a very comfortable um, device to test, right? I mean, very comfortable. It's like, it accepts the boot and stuff, but otherwise um, having like a full um, secure shell, GDB, GCC. I mean, this is the stuff you don't have, like like what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm, I have your GCC, right? Miss Akaf, hello, C. Um, how fast is this, by the way? Oh, tenth of a second. Yeah, that's already slower. That is already yeah, C plus plus two seconds. <laughs> yeah, that is why BTOP uh, builds so much. But even freaking Rust, right? So I have your full because that is a full freaking professional embedded um, and enterprise ready Linux distribution. That is 
our T2. Um, I have everything there, right? Including uh, I could build your Valgrin, and that's the difference between T2 and OpenWRT, except they have the boot and image definitions, which, for which I'm very thankful, obviously. But yeah, um, want to build a Rust? Actually, this word, why does this not? Um, pro ah, also, yeah. Nothing like doing this wrong live on camera. So, a full Rust compiler, and this is also testing, right? I've never used a Rust compi uh, compiler on 32 uh, bit ARM. So, it's again testing, testing the mod testing, like nothing like using your own stuff. And um, it actually um, works. Building it like native Rust development on your dual core 1.6 gigahertz. It is also crazy how much processing power that is, right? I just say like, yeah, dual core 1.6 gigahertz, 512 megabyte. This was some 15 years ago that was a base configuration of an Apple MacBook or so. Um, yeah, so Rust works, um, Lua Lua did works, and nothing like, again, nothing like testing your own stuff. <coughs> um, and uh, so yeah, WireGuard, I um, emerged already. Um, what else do you want to see? So yeah, Firefox, I um, probably I go back to the drawing board, nothing like delaying your Linux distribution another week. I probably need to check. I mean, it, it's it's not worth to re release T2 now, um, when also we have a glibc2 update. But um, yeah, with ICU stuff, I, I slightly wonder why that failed. Uh, sorry, strange, need to check if that is an end in a thing. Yeah. How to tell? I need to need to debug that. Um, yeah, GDB, we, we can for the fun, uh, while I go through the comments, you know what? Um, it's, it's, it's like, it's 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 a personal computer, right? It's a general purpose um, computing machine, right? Debs. Um, Missing only, and it's uh, verbose emerge Valgrind and see what happens. Uh, also, somehow it's not my day to do some typing and stuff. Um, and for those new to the stuff, yes, it's like Gen2 just supporting um, more stuff and, and different and differently sorted and so on. I hope the Gen2 people and Arch people and OpenWT people feel all at home. All ah, right, there's also one more thing actually. And this is also the kind of stuff, right? Instead of having a, like, saving energy, right? Um, f for your off grid cabin um, or avoiding blackouts in your country in these days, it's replacing another x86 65 watt um, quad core phenom, right? Of course, not the same speed, but it can, it can perform the same functions, like routing and firewall and and wire guard and, and stuff. Um, the only thing here is, the, uh, not, not only, uh, yeah, one thing, by default T2 com recompresses stuff with um, dash 20 and other people complained already. We probably need to change that um, somehow uh, because if you, and that's also the stuff testing, testing the more testing, right? Um, this is Power PC 64 and Spark 64, I don't always realize instantly, but if you don't have enough memory, this will actually, um, well, rec I'm sorry, yeah, set standard recompress, right? So like, yeah, that set standard is, um, that is a little bit slower. <clears throat> um, but yeah, probably so on low memory machines, um, how do we do that? I mean, maybe we test, I mean, we could either check if, if it's a 64-bit architecture, I mean, so it's mostly valid for our mirrors, right? On our mirrors, I want the stuff like as reasonable, much compressed. Um, but locally, for not for the mirror, so my two major things would be either uname architecture, like if you architecture um, <clears throat> starts and ends with sixty four, or maybe the better thing would be simply free memory, like if you have like less than um, yeah, I need, yeah, something of that sort. Like if you have less than some gig of memory, then you don't get it here, but it already configures. Um, <clears throat> and that is also yesterday why I, I want to build Zumba. Obviously, even on this relatively fast dual core, one particular gigahertz stuff, um, Cortex, what is it, A9 or so. I obviously don't want to really build Zumba, right? Okay, I of course can build this overnight. It probably will build overnight. Like yesterday's live stream, right? Um, why did I want to check? Ah, I should have checked instantly. 
Ah, oh, right, I wanted LSCPU. Cortex A9, ja, Cortex A9. Um, this is configured already. I mean, it's not that slow, right? I mean, if you if you have some patience, it, it, it is an okay Linux kinder server node development test machine, right? Um, yeah, let's build Vagrant. Let's see how this goes. Actually, maybe I should check if we can cross compile Vagrant. Maybe you can already. I always wonder how much stuff I should pre build. Maybe I should. Maybe I should pre build all. Yeah, it's, it's marked cross. Maybe it does work cross. Not sure. Um, yeah, although I don't need Vagrant here. It was more than. Oh, we can let this running while all this stuff. But. Um, Let's better emerge a Zumber. Although I, I probably need actually it's not the most useful thing. I mean, I would need Zumber on this thing, but yeah, let's put some stuff. Why does it build on Valgrind? So I probably yeah, some packages have random Valgrind. Um, I will also, uh, as I want more people to be able to use that, yeah, all this stuff is probably um, random. It's, uh, this stuff is probably, I mean, either it tests really to, I mean, this is also silly, right? I find this, another thing is to this video of, of really stupid configure systems. I find it really stupid to test for Valgrind. If a developer, like, in my opinion, projects do not need integrated Valgrind support. If you, as a developer, uh, one of the few developers who ever needs to run Valgrind, and then just run it, about that configure tests or stuff maybe either intentionally or unintentionally randomly um, test for that is, is also silly that's why I currently manually cl clean this up um, to it is usually should be supposed to be automatic but we still need to do some fine polishing to be able to ship this um, fully automatically rebuilding things um, sometime soon. Like nothing, some, nothing like git or subversion committing from your wireless access point, right? Mm. <coughs> yeah, I was pasted. Don't really want to show the password entering and progress. So yeah, um, I would in general encourage much more off-label use, um, creative use of stuff. You don't always need the latest and greatest. And uh, when people ask me what should they do, I always say do what you need or want to have fun with or, or are interested in. That's also why I do this, right? I want to use stuff I have, um, most power efficient and so on. Um, and this is actually, yeah, you see, I mean, it's, it's, it's endurable. It's, it's not Intel first gen atom territory. It's, it's actually actual use <laughs> performance. And we have people watching. That is amazing. Um, yeah, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. So yeah, that was, it's like, yeah, ACL installed in, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, scrolling away. Yeah. What is it? Oh, dog books. Yeah, okay, fine, build dog books. So do I? I don't really need that. No. Mm. It was already built. Now yeah, this pearl thing we need so. I will also modernize, so now that we, um, after three years live on this channel, live on YouTube, we did, did so much, uh, refixed all the architectures that I ne neglected, um, from Spark to uh, Super H, um, certainly Ultra Spark and so on. Six and seven hours KDE and GNOME marathon update streams, and then all the uh, hours of Rust and Cargo and, and cross-compiling. T2 is, of course, as you probably see, in a pretty amazing state. Also, uh, given the nature of the complexity and upstream um, configure scripts and stuff, stuff can break. And especially if you like, yeah, dependency revision stuff could always be better. 
um, as per usual, right? Not even Apple, Apple's macOS or Microsoft Windows is perfect. So, but as an expert domain specific system, I would still give it quite some thumbs up. But as usual, leave in the comments below what you think. Oops. Let's build rather this and the number, but um, I also need to check. Um, actually, I, I checked yesterday um, on my previous live stream where I was annoyed that Zamba now needs, needs Heimdall. Um, I actually checked this stupid WAF configure script and actually it is hard coded there. Also, yeah, we, unfortunately, this stuff is also stupid. I know this already, the Perl cross, the cross compiled Perl is not fully functional. It's, it's like mostly functional, but yeah, this is kind of stuff. It's rebuilt Perl, unfortunately. Um, and Python and Mason and Ninja. But yeah, um, be creative, uh, save energy, um, and with that money, um, use stuff as uh, at its fullest potential, um, and have, have fun. Have fun with your devices. Um, and patches welcome. Where's my mouse cursor? Where's my mouse cursor? Hey, zero frames. So let's see. We have there some comments. That of course are partially clipped because. Yeah. Mr. IoT so tech. What about single board computers, Orange Pi boards? Yes, as, as I said, right, all those boards often need different U boot and whatnot stuff. But I, I also don't really want to buy all of them, right? This is why I, I kind of boycotted. I mean, we had embedded projects even 15 years ago. Um, but due to the mess, I always found this ARM boot stuff too messy, which is why I. And, Ironically, 15 years ago, this ARM stuff was also too expensive, right? So many embedded projects, we talked, we probably 90% of the embedded projects were never realized back in the day, at least not in the specs that were discussed with us, because 15 years ago, um, think TI Beagle board um, and such, ARM devices were so expensive that often the the cost for that, for, for low volume embedded stuff was actually not profitable, right? Um, but yeah, I, I, and due to that, due to the prices back in the day, and then um, the, the total mess that is ARM board support boot stuff, um, I kinder, kind kind of didn't care, um, to be honest. Um, Eric, guys, is it possible to build a desktop version? Any DECA XFCE with all cutting edge? As, so that that is what we constantly do, right? Um, as that that is what my ISOs are and. Currently, actually, switched to XFCE. We have KDE in GNOME, but due to the hundreds of dependencies, some of those dependencies may not yet be fully patched and configured to actually compile and work. But yeah, our ISOs are at release date always cutting edge, and currently, um, all the desktop stuff, including this. Um, oops. No, I pressed. Uh, I had some focus, including. Here I have XFCE, yeah, I have XFCE here on the um, <laughs> Lexus, but yeah. Danimanex writes Orange Pi 5 uses branch 510. Yeah, that is the thing, right? Um, all the custom trees, right? So I'm I'm lucky with this one that this appears to be upstream, but that also really annoyed me, right? In my opinion, the whole ARM, the whole historic ARM architecture, boot configuration and, and stuff, it's it's such a fail, it is ridiculous that the ARM limited company allowed this chaos. Um, the problem is that 10,000 different socks and cores for embedded devices and custom processes have been, and, and custom firmware were created for like 10,000 devices with, and also like all the devices, like stupid serial controls, like each bloody ARM platform from Samsung, even used in first gen iPhone and iPad, um, to all the other NVIDIA and, uh, and other companies, um, um, Even the serial, like all the all the cheap 
on-chip peripherals are all custom and, and require custom drivers. It's a total mess and fail, which is, yeah, um, I will pr probably only like, I, we should add example stuff for Raspberry Pi and Apple Silicon and, and have EFI bootable. And then I should like what, obviously I will only, I will not buy new random garbage. Like if you have an orange pie, then patch is welcome. Um, and otherwise I will obviously add what, what I have um, myself like this, like this, what was it? Amada, Mumber, um, Amada, maybe Mumber or something like that was internal code name. Um, Mr. IoT Tech asks, people use WireGuard. I will probably make a dedicated video. I've also finally just switched uh, this month, um, the last month to WireGuard, and it's so much more amazing simple, right? When I set up the first OpenVPN with, we of course have the packages. It was uh, like, I, I read stupid manuals like for a whole freaking day, and at the end of the day, like when I was 20 at university, 15 years ago, at the end of the day, I still didn't get open VPN, whatever, or IPsec, whatever tool stuff. Like, yeah, it, it was like a day. I mean, it, today might be easier, but anyway, uh, WireGuard is so much simpler and the tools are super, super nice and simple. And um, I did not, obviously I can't cryptograph cryptographically um, analyze all the protocols, but I trust those people, hopefully, that, I mean, they say it is simple and secure and, um, until major cryptographers prove otherwise. Um, it, it looks on a first glance. Um, it, it works and, yeah, simple works and, uh, and that's what, what counts. Um, just want a Snapdragon, now the X alternative for laptops thing, short period market will move to ARM64. Um, I'm not so sure. I think a lot of this mainstream stuff will remain um, x86 for Windows compatibility reasons and like binary software and games. Uh, let's also emerge um, for... I, I think ARM... <clears throat> The arm. <coughs> <coughs> oh man. Soon one month. Kind of illish. Um, I don't expect the ARM64 stuff to gain much, much traction except at Apple. Um, simply because also the stuff, either it, the, the non Apple stuff is not powerful, not epic thread ripping enough, and for that it is also too costly, right? This Lenovo ThinkPad. At least, at least if you buy quality things and not like super cheap and even lower performance netbook kind of things. Um, somehow, it, somehow it gets a little bit slowish. Is this, maybe it's a little bit, maybe I should have added swap to be honest. This is my network or is that Is this LTO linking? Maybe it's LTO linking. Somehow available buffers. I mean, it still has buffer cached 120. No, I'm not really sure why that is that slow. some swap on USB. Is that enough swap? Uh, not sure if it will. And at least the kernel should be able to. Yeah, 
man, it's such a typing experience. Hmm, not really, not really better. Let's find did it page something out already, or no, it didn't. Oh wait, ah, I didn't swap on it. It immediately, uh, I'm not sure if that is coincidence, but immediately it feels happy. Yeah, what a wonder. Um, what did it propose? 600? Yeah, pro tip um, at some USB 3 swap 3 or 512. Um, so, yeah, emerge. How much did it swap out in the meantime? So obviously we need Mason and Ninja uh, this day and age on our access point. And um, okay, this has no additional depths. Oops. But we also need to force emerge Python because I already know that Perl and Python you currently need to rebuild because cross compiled they are not fully functional. There's like 90 plus ish percent. Maybe someday if you share, like, and subscribe enough and Patreon and GoFundMe and so on, I will debug and find out what more Python and Perl need. Oh, darn, this builds more than I. Only want, don't want edit. Python has also optional stuff that I don't want. Anyway, so yeah, people, um, people watching how to build software it's like, yeah, um, build software on a, on a freaking access point. So it's basically for this video, I have some homework. Um, I also started to write another article uh, for our uh, uh, magazine. We have here some old fashioned magazine from the days where like magazines on, you could maybe probably I should rename this blog. Some file system benchmarking and just like not nothing really big except like when some LVM stuff was new and cool, um, like caching and so on. Some notes on that. I also started to write a like first steps with new T2 installations. There's a useful stuff like emer re -emer re yeah, re emerging Perl and Python to make native builds them with all features. Um, and uh, that's certainly a good thing to know. That is, of course, um, previously we never had the issue. That is only because newly the last years we cross compile everything to have the same build style for all architecture, whether it's Epic Thread Ripping, AMD Ryzen, or ARM to Super H and, and RISC V and so on. And now the, I need to debug the ICU stuff. So I found some stuff, including small stuff we probably actually could next. Um, hey, what in the amazing stuff some people are watching that always motivates me. Oh man, I didn't, um, I didn't work some days with this keyboard. So some keyboard with a compose and alt graph keys are somewhere else. Um, does this have a, or does this not have nothing like reading man pages on your access point? Um, I think it had it does not hit somewhere. <coughs> ah, I think in the, it in the init ID. Somewhere I do that already. I think for the P3 in the init ID probably. John Cohn writes, does it have enough space? Um, if you mean storage built on the device, no. But I just plugged them I in mean, USB 3, right? I just plugged in one terabyte of uh, USB 3 connected. Samsung 980 or so um, SSD. Um, internally, I think maybe it has internally two M.2s. Uh, M.2? Um, I think PCIe um, 
I think it has two wireless modules. I didn't open it yet, because why should I? Um, but uh, yeah, it has, so I didn't test that, but maybe you can remove the 2.4 gigahertz radio if, if you're not using, like I, I don't use it even. So maybe I could swap, maybe I should test that actually, maybe that is more watchable YouTube content for the more main channel. Yeah. Um, maybe it works if you don't need the 2.4 gigahertz radio. I don't know if it, if the bloody firmware boots then, I, I don't know, maybe the firmware has hard-coded device stuff. But if you're lucky, you could plug in, what else does it have here on? Um, maybe you can Google if someone has done that already. The, by the way, that, that is the old version, I believe. Um, I have version 2 and the version, I think the version 2 has slightly newer silicon revision and stuff and not a fan as far as I know. But anyway, yeah, you see it even has a serial ADA, but I don't want to have a power supply next to it. So that is why I use uh, USB bus powered. Um, can, maybe the SATA interface could be faster. But leave me in the comments below. But yeah, for me, USB, I mean, for like low, for that, I don't need more, right? I mean, I could even live with rotational storage, but with modern SSD price, you can plug in a, I wouldn't plug in a USB thumb drive because often they don't have very level management and they, the 1000, I mean, unless you use this new, like last year's or like half a decade years, um, there is this endurance thing of, maybe there even was a Windows boot specified endurance USB specification, certification stuff. Because if you buy a regular USB thumb drive, they often don't have uh, sophisticated wear leveling and then they, they might be defect like after even only a month of um, writing X4 and stuff, um, journal to the same location and so on. So at least I once I once destroyed a not very sophisticated wear leveling SanDisk SD card, micro SD card in the Microsoft Surface in just six months. Right? I didn't even use it daily. So just like every other day using Linux on that Microsoft Surface destroyed an entry level SD card just five, six years ago um, quickly. Um, stage, where are the stages? <coughs> Excuse me. At least I'm still alive. So, I have some very size limit here. Where would it be? Uh, free. Here. Um, how do I do that? A mem total and proc mem info. Mm. Yeah, that is of course not very scalable to macOS and stuff. Um, that is certainly nice and easy and stuff. But oops. But we need something more portable. Yeah, Python config. So yeah, I mean, totally. How much do we swap right now? Do we have IO stop? Hey, we have IO stop. So yeah, quite some. Wow, it's using freaking two. Actually, it might be temp. If all ah, right, it actually. Ah, you know what? Is the reason this was? Um, it's building on tempfs. So maybe we probably want to disable that. To be honest. That is why it was uh, swapping to death. It, it swapped, um, or not, it, it wasn't swapping to death, it was choking to death. Um, and the reason is T2 was building that in tempfs and then of course the memory quickly goes and all the stuff is now swapped to um, like yeah, 220 mega, 200 megabytes. That is of course uh, the T2 sources of Perl and Python. So much to yeah, shooting yourself into your um, command line prompt on an access point with a simple temp of a strip. Anyway, yeah, it needs to get a little bit used to, right? Um, a little bit resource constrained usage patterns and configurations. What exactly? Can you talk a little bit about hermetic builds? Do you mean something like uh, what 
the process will mean with that, like reproducible builds or something. Um, but probably another video because it's already longer than I kind of thought. Yeah, 50 minutes. Because um, I will probably only finish. Maybe I for now, <clears throat> maybe for now I, I, I wire that to 64 bit platform because then it also works on macOS and BSD. And uh, because I'm, um, I'm not in the mood of checking with BSD and macOS as we also support building on that. So. Probably just that mm, is good enough for now with maybe a to do um, uh, how do we do this? If this is a 64, like most likely, of course, it's a little bit fuzzy matching here, but probably 90. I mean, it works for x86-64, ARM64. Um, it's probably good enough for most things. Yeah, the thing is, maybe even it's kind of pointless because I'm only wondering, like, typing. Um, Having having that in the variable assignment, or um, it, it basically makes no sense to factor that out. So, if it's sixty four, then ultra twenty, and otherwise, like I mean, sixteen worked. I mean, you could argue maybe it would be worse not to implement a recompression, but the problem is all the code relies on having one compressor but maybe like either People always message me when I live on YouTube. Um, to do check the physical check. Should we even? I mean, you could. Theoretically, have like an ARM embedded thing or whatever with only little memory. Like, think an Apple product, right? An entry level MacBook Air from 10 years ago. <laughs> How much did they have? Or did they also have half a, half a gig or only one gig or whatever? But anyway, um, also there's a typo. So we had Ultra 20. Yeah. 64, well, probably should work. And that is this kind of stuff. How did this fail? Ah, oh, no space left on device. Oh, cool. Mm. Tempest full. Oh, what a pity. So many, so many precious low power arm cycles wasted. Anyway, this can run later. I anyway need to, yeah. Uh, this can basically, it will not need the night. It will probably emerge like in 30, 40 minutes. Um, what we are using for, for routing? Yes, IP tables, of course. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, let's probably, you know, let's, Let's maybe emerge Ninja or so in parallel, just to check the new uh, download thing. <coughs> oh, darn, now it wants about your name. Oh, darn. Uh, I think, did I had this already?
I remember Actually, will this will this user n check the path? No. Okay, then it doesn't send our wrapper because we have a wrapper for that. It is of course not ideal. I do we even can work around that by simply running an absolute path, I hope. And we will see if that fails on BSD and stuff. Um, yeah, so much for testing, right? I nearly wanted to commit this. I mean, it would have worked, but yeah, always pro tip, always actually test the stuff you wrote because each time, usually if you don't test it, it, it it's broken. Uh, what did I, oh, maybe I press control C then? Sure. Uh, probably I, I run cleanup, this cleanup has deleted that behind its back. Yeah, of course it's not super fast. I never said it's an epic thread ripping access point, right? But I mean, even, I mean, you can run your mail server obviously on that. Um, like if you want, I mean, nowadays you have your bloody energy consuming cable modem or so, uh, which is also, yeah, you usually can't run this stuff. It's usually from the cable companies, pretty locked down devices, unfortunately. Um, Otherwise, you could have run that even on bloody cable modem, right? Which, I mean, unless you buy your own, which nowadays in Germany you could could do. But then even then they might be, even if you buy your own, they might be locked down enough or, I don't know. But it means the same applies, right? There's nothing stopping you from having, your, even even if you do a change route, right? Also, as an inspiration, uh, you don't always need to reflash the stuff. Even I take the easy route of just flashing some open WRT firmware for bootstrapping that and then just change root environment, right? Kind of sandbox and then run your stuff, right? Email, file server, cloud, like run your next cloud, whatever stuff. Small web server to host your stuff. If you like to host your stuff yourself the old fashioned way, without a bloody cloud without actually paying someone else. Um, did this download? No, I'm. Apparently downloaded already, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe free would actually be better um, if we somehow. Yeah, I mean, we, we could pass free, but it's a little bit annoying. I think it didn't have a format string, so yeah, it's not really what I wanted. Does Neo fetch princess? Yeah, whichever. What do they use? I always also obviously peek into other people's stuff. Hmm. Top org. Now yeah, there you see portability. Thank you very much. VM start. Oh, come on. Linux and Windows. Uh, what case OS read? Ah, uh, proxy. Ah, uh, on what Windows? Windows. Okay, they are using mem info here, which are obviously syscontrol. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought already. This is also silly that this kind of things are not some Unix standard stuff. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I guess this stuff works. Actually, I should have checked uh, which what we use, what we run there.
ultra or do I? I probably have a typo in there. I didn't mean ultra for both. Obviously we don't. Uh, what? Do we have these tries? Obviously full blown vim, right? Uh, I don't see ultra here. What have I done? Ultra twenty. Where is this ultra coming from? I built turret. Why do we have? <coughs> <coughs> As it is, I oh, wait, why is this? <coughs> why do we have that here or is it, is it extracting? I don't know what this is. The so for the binary package, we have that already. Hmm, not really sure what I have done here. That this is ultra. Do I even look at the. Ah, maybe this is a parallel download. Ah, maybe this is confusing because I'm somewhere in parallel. Building that somewhere? Or maybe I, I think I've stopped the, jo uh, the job in the background, probably in the other. Yeah, T O six. So I looked actually at the wrong thing. Like probably somewhere I have this. Now here is also probably that one here. Nothing like multitasking like a crazy person on your Google Core Arm router. So yeah, that's for the video. Um, amazing, uh, of course, as usual, tinkering around a little bit. Uh, 30 minutes longer than the video should be. But anyway, um, nice thing around. Uh, so yeah, my, my, my coughing and bronchitis is mostly away. So probably some more live streams, hopefully soon, because um, as you've noticed from the last live streams the last weeks, um, I could mostly speak, but it's of course not fun for you to listen when every minute or two I need to cough here. <clears throat> so yeah, Amazing improvements, including so other this this is what people hit at home, right? I think yeah. Um, just the other day, a new T2 user of which, of course, nowadays we have every day uh, with with YouTube and other worldwide promotion. Um, someone on a on a regular, of course, new T2 users. What do they use to build T2? Of course, a twenty-year-old um, thirty-two-bit x86 laptop. And but even it would, I would hit this if I. Test builders on a G4, PowerPC G4 Cube or a PowerBook and, and so on. So it, it had to be done um, eventually and I only get reminded and, and got to do it if I if it like affects me. Um, Even if ed with edit swap, um, it makes no sense because obviously uh, this would be uh, super slow, right? Um, each constantly, especially set standard scanning, massive amounts of memory there uh, with this wide um, sliding windows and stuff and compression dictionaries and obviously this would totally degrade performance in multiple orders of magnitudes if it would constantly be swapping to this. Hey, this is actually, uh, it's actually, yeah, we need to change this sometime soon, but not today, because now I realize that we have the same exact issue on the PS3, right? our most famous, amazing platform, 64-bit. Uh, Yet, although maybe it doesn't trigger, maybe it, maybe we are lucky with our 32-bit build and it not, I know, maybe it, 
actually I think this might actually shine through although we we run a 64-bit kernel and we don't run this switched architecture personality so actually probably we will get power pc 64 on, on the p3 so yeah we need to eventually change that so actually the, the to do is actually wanted but that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed this and learned something have fun with your devices use your embedded IoT devices, especially when the vendors do not update the firmware to its fullest potential, just DIY and do amazing stuff. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for the next fun stuff to come.